Let's rise to our feet, please. Let's rise to our feet, please. You are God from beginning to the end. Rise, Lord, let's for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Father, we thank you for a time like this. And we thank you for how far you have led us in this place. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, continue to lay your hands upon us. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. I want somebody who is happy that he or she is here. And you believe that this will be the beginning of greater things for you to shout a very loud hallelujah. <laughs> the governor of Lagos State, Governor Ogu State, represented by our lovely brother here, Satalavi, the AGOs, the pastors, vice chancellors from other universities. Vice Chancellor from my own former university, <laughs> University of Lagos. <laughs> my first supervisor when I was doing my project as a student, Professor Tolu Dubemi. <laughs> I'll get on the other existing protocol. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, boys and girls. It's with immense joy and gratitude to the Most High God, the Alpha and Omega, the author and finisher of our faith, that I'm delighted to welcome you all to this great occasion of the first convocation ceremony of Mountain Top University. I bless the name of the Almighty God who has been our help in ages past and our hope of glory. I appreciate the unflinching and unrelenting support of my darling, wonderful wife, Dr. Nukoya for her exceptional and unending passion towards the growth of this university. Our commitment is making the Mountain Top University a world standard citadel of learning and is highly uh, commendable and immeasurable. We appreciate the significant and sacrificial contribution of our governing council towards the realization of the goals and principles of this university. Our indefatigable and assiduous staff who have helped tremendously in achieving the vision of the school and in grooming these outstanding champions, our firstborn, they are greatly appreciated. God, we, God Almighty will reward you and we really appreciate your hard work. I acknowledge the able leadership of the management team, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Pastor Bishop Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> but the great role has been placed in the inception of this great citadel of learning in order to ensure the advancement and development of the university. Our appreciation also goes to the entire team of leaders, principal officers, deans, directors, head of departments, coordinator of units who have all given their very best. The Almighty God will reward you all tremendously in Jesus' name. This university, which was established in 2015, today that university is four years old and has continued to grow and attract commendations. For this, we appreciate the constant support of the proprietor and the Mountain of Fire and Miracles uh, Ministry. We are also indebted to the National University Commission, who has been a partner since day one, and they are working closely with us to ensure that we are providing and facilitating the highest level of teaching and learning practice with real outcomes. The fact that we are here today celebrating our first set of graduates shows a real deliverable, a desirable outcome from our partnership. Many of you know that I have a great passion for youth, and this Mountain Top University is part of the agenda to fulfill that passion. 
Amen. I'm sure you all know about the MFM Football Club. My passion is anything that will take the youth from the streets, anything that will make them fulfill their destiny, anything that will put them into a useful path is my passion. And God has been helping us. Recently, we've started a women basketball team, and they did so well. They've only been around for one year. And um, last week, they were representing Nigeria in Egypt. They've only played basketball for one year. So, women. We've been running leadership courses, marriage seminar courses, cooking competitions, all kinds of uh, programs on this 70 point agenda that we started uh, many years ago. I won't want to bore you with more details. But let me say that I appreciate the support of you parents, friends, family members, your monetary, material, spiritual, emotional investments have not been a waste. I will not be a waste in Jesus' name. Amen. You will reap the fruit of your labor over all these children in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's impossible to end a speech like this without thanking the entire members of Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry, the pastors the pastorate, the members, every member who have contributed tremendously to get us to this level. I congratulate you and I congratulate all of us in the name of Jesus. All the pastors who are here in this uh, occasion who are seated in the congregation, can you shout aloud hallelujah? God bless you and welcome in Jesus' name. So my Heavenly Father reward you abundantly. And I pray that we'll continue to go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. So I congratulate the parents of all the graduates of today. And I congratulate all the, those who are graduating today too. And thank you for being the firstborn <laughs> of this university. Uh, a, a university that empowers you to excel. And I'm sure that you have not regretted your coming here. Uh, I know that some of you have come to say that, oh, this place is like a prison yard. <laughs> but, uh, you can see, you not, now you know the reason why. Oh, you enter into this place, they don't want you to use your phone, they don't want you to use that. The idea is to structure your life and to incubate you so that when you arch, you become a champion. <laughs> Glory be to the name of the Lord. I'm reading from my Bible, from Proverbs chapter 29. This is a word I just want to drop with the graduates and all of us who are here today. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Can you see that and let me hear you? Say it loud and clear. Can you raise up your voice like an evangelist? This is a very deep statement from scriptures. Everything you see existing that man has made started with a vision. Whether it's a house, a building, car, automobile, anything it starts with a vision. And I used to tell the pastors that when you are posted to a place as a pastor, you should have two visions. One, the vision of where you are now. Two, the vision of what you want it to become and you walk towards that vision a visionless person is a dead person joseph had a vision and he pursued that vision all those things that could have hindered him from pursuing the vision he took them off there are many vision blockers there are many things derailing the young ones in this generation derailing people from fulfilling their vision. You should shun those things. Don't copy evil. Because evil will only escort you to the brink of disaster. Drop you there and walk away. The devil is an expert at cajoling people, helping them to fail. 
is very good at preparing food that will make you fail. So, and, once the, and the food of the devil is very delicious. But after you have consumed that food, it will give you the kind of stomach indigestion you have never experienced before. So, as you leave this institution, I want you to be a man or woman of vision. Have a vision. Be focused. Don't get distracted. Have a vision. A vision is a very powerful thing. Joseph landed in the pit. Joseph landed in the pit. In the pit, he looks around and says, No, this is not my final bus stop. This is not where people will bow down to me. He, get, he came out of the pit. He went into Potiphar's house. There too, he could only see Potiphar and his wife. He said, No, this is not where people will bow down to me. I have a vision. Something tried to derail that vision in Potiphar's house, but Joseph refused to be derailed. I'm praying for all of you. At any agenda of the enemy to derail your vision and to remove that which God has planted into your life will be destroyed today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let that amen rule like thunder. Amen. So a vision is a spiritual photography which you must keep in your mind. A vision is an expression of faith which you must believe God for. A vision is a dream, a dream, a desire for the fulfillment of something that is good that's about to happen in your life. A vision is a revelation, an idea of God that has implanted into your spirit. A vision is a mission. A mission, a task that must be done. So you've come here now, you've gotten a degree, we've taught you some entrepreneurship skills, now you should be able to find a way around at least one musical instrument, now you should be able to speak another language, well, at least to get by, so you've been empowered. So now, add that with a vision of what you want your life to be, pursue that, and the power of God will fall upon you and will make you the kind of person you should be in the name of Jesus. And I used to preach at all our youth meetings that in this life, it is purpose before partner. Get the purpose of God for your life before you start getting a partner. If you don't get that purpose right and what you are looking for is a partner, you may get a partner that will be a deficit to your purpose. You may marry a fire extinguisher and it will extinguish all the fire that you have. So as you go forth from here, I'm praying for you that you'll be a man, woman of vision in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for those of us who are gathered there to celebrate with us today, I decree upon your life that every tragedy, every sorrow left in this year, it is minus you and your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that you go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Amen. And at the end of the day, when the role is called up yonder, all of us shall be there in the name of Jesus. God bless you in Jesus' name.